So before Nintendo knew they had a smash hit success story on their hands with the Nintendo Switch console being now a hundred plus million units seller, there was a period of intense struggle at the company during the Wii U era as that console only sold just over 13 million total units and we saw Nintendo get creative and try to drive additional red revenue to their bottom line which we saw in the form of the NES Mini released in late 2016 and then fast forward one more year into 2017, also the Switch's launch year, we saw the SNES Mini, many Many fans expected a N64 Mini, and while we have not gotten that, in today's video, I want to take a look back at Nintendo's strategy with these mini era of consoles, have a closer look at the hardware and the games, how they emulate, and discuss a time that Nintendo relied on their classic library of games before Nintendo Switch Online. So it's easy to forget with how successful Nintendo is nowadays that once upon a time they really had to get creative and discover new ways to drive in revenue and we did see them rely on nostalgia as we do see them do today of course with Nintendo Switch Online and drive ongoing revenue but we saw them release this mini line of consoles which I think is a very cool thing as a collector. Of course we have the expected games that you would have on there most of these to be fair, are on NSO. However, we do have some standout titles that are still missing, such as your Mega Man 2, the original Final Fantasy, amongst others. And you know what? It's something that I hope that all these games are ultimately on NSO. But this was a special period in time when they decided to rely on classic hardware, as after the NES Mini, they went straight to the SNES Mini the next year with also a banger lineup of games, even the never before released Star Fox 2, which now is easily playable on NSO at that point in time was I, there's some history behind that that I'm not entirely uh, for sure about but I think that it's it was essentially a done game and it got shelved ultimately so literally a new unreleased title and you know what that one game we keep talking about in our SNES wish list for games to come to the service Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars is playable here so Nintendo we know you can pay the licensing fees if you want to for that game so where is it at even launching with classic iconic titles like Earthbound, and we have Mega Man X on here. Definitely some standout games that we don't get to experience right now on the current state of NSO. And it's really cool when you think about if you are somebody who's a Nintendo collector, you literally have the same inspired form factor which was so successful by the way that we've even seen sega do this now like with the genesis mini line of consoles even going as far as for the genesis mini 2 and the really cool thing about this is one they gave us some modern control ports so of course you know they're nintendo proprietary but you can actually use uh, more recently released versions of classic controllers and then the biggest thing is these having the hdmi port because if you're like me, most TVs that you probably have around the house now only support HDMI and you're really not going to have a scenario where it is easy to hook up a component cable uh, or something or uh, composite back in the day to actually experience these these games and, you know, hook them up in an easy way, even going a step further with the uh, SNES Mini where they did a cover for the controller ports on there. Now, thankfully, they made the wire longer on the SNES Mini after it was out because the wire on the NES Mini controller controller is ridiculously short now plenty of people myself included mo could mod these and did I did mod my SNES mini which by the way took me a while to unmod it for the video but we have to take a closer look at the library of games that these consoles had to offer and discuss whether or not we may ever see Nintendo revert back to this formula in the future because we're still missing consoles like a N64 mini but we'll quickly hop into some gameplay together so right away, you'll start to notice as you scroll through the library of games that there are definitely some standout ones that are missing still from NSO today. And it's interesting to see Nintendo go to that subscription model to drive revenue, which of course, if you can sell a, one of these mini consoles for 60, 70, $80 one time, or you can get somebody to pay $20 annually and keep renewing it, or $50 annually for the expansion pack and continue to renew it year in and year out, you know you're going to quickly come out ahead in the form of subscription services. And so we've seen them ultimately gravitate towards that. Now, I don't have the most nostalgia in the world for the NES era of gaming because the first console console that I owned was the SNES. However, growing up a true hardcore gamer after the SNES era, I went back and played many of the classic titles on the NES to experience them, such as your Legend of Zelda, such as your Castlevania 1 and 2, and then of course this does not have 3, but also a fantastic one, and it's some of the 
those standout games like this with some of the best soundtracks that really do make you think Nintendo has to at some point in time step up and do those additional licensing fees to get these games on there uh, clearly they can be done and the negotiations can be worked out and at the end of the day you know when we see these new NES and SNES games added into the library that are like bottom of the barrel titles it's kind of like fans who have been around in this era of Nintendo's timeline of classic games know that they are just essentially not paying the money that needs to be paid to do it and taking the uh the rather cost effective or cheap way out uh which is what causes some of that fan frustration and i definitely get that because i want to play castlevania on the NS nso i will also highlight uh, if I can remember, I might just have to hit the reset button here. It's been a while since I booted these up, but it did just automatically do a save state for me. They also had display options for things like if you wanted a CRT filter, which I've never been a huge fan of, or pixel perfect. In a perfect world, they would even give us the option to stretch the image because while I don't typically prefer that either, there are people out there that would rather have a stretch image take up the entire screen, or at least just give us black bars on the side and not, you know, those that Nintendo Switch style, like, gray icons or gray bubbles that are on the sides make some of that stuff customizable and with that we'll quickly hop into the snes mini next so then looking through the snes library of games you have another solid lineup of course the downside to things like these mini consoles as opposed to what we see with nso would be the fact that once you purchase it these games are all you get clearly you're never going to get any kind of future updates or anything like that but you do have a notable experience that you can only have on a home console to be fair too because now that the switch is portable form factor is a very nice addition and something that I you know think the Nintendo should continue to stick with in the future it's definitely something that you do realize yeah there's no way for me to play these classic games on the go with the mini consoles but it's really more aimed for just nostalgia and collectors out there and to kind of address the question on whether or not we may ever see Nintendo do something like their mini line again with the N64 I'm gonna put my money on no I would love to be wrong about that but just their uh you know where they've kind of shifted their mindset to with their classic library of games, I feel like is a mixture of either a subscription-based model to continue to drive revenue and that to be the only way to easily play the games. I think they'll strategically keep them like that or they will uh, potentially do something like remakes and re-releases, especially whenever you talk about, you know, the GameCube era of games uh, and be even before that, Nintendo could get weird one day and just decide to do a from the ground up, you know, remake of something on the N64 era or even even the SNES, I mean, we saw them do Link's Awakening, uh, which is a Zelda game 2D that, of course, Zelda is one of those unique franchises that you could justify a remake for. You know, Mario being a similar one, even Donkey Kong, you want to remake the Donkey Kong Country games one through three with HD visuals. I think everybody's buying those. And then the same thing for Mario. You know, you could do Super Mario World with a from the ground up remake and just try to keep that thing in stock, especially if they do limited runs type stuff which they did unfortunately do with these mini line of consoles of course they are not still producing them to the to this day but there was you know that that window of time where you could actually go out and pick up nintendo hardware and it definitely was during that time period where even being a nintendo fan you know reading the rumors online really a little bit scary seeing the kind of like the financials and people talk about whether or not the wii u just really did nintendo in at that point because they spent of course so much money on the uh developing the console itself and it just was truly a flop so to see nintendo get creative and rely on their classic library like this and have that you know maybe once in a lifetime period where we saw the mini line of consoles make a you know a a shot at the market i think was a really cool time to be alive and fortunately uh, i was able to purchase these things at retail when they were out uh shout out to, to my fiance that actually got me the snes mini as a gift but i do think that it's one of those things that you know i it's it's sad that we're past that era now and i don't expect an n64 mini even though maybe i'm wrong one day in the far distant future nintendo may be in another scenario where they need the cash and they don't want to you know rely on just the subscription service for things and they may give us that n64 mini i think it's going to be long after they've accomplished whatever they want to accomplish and whatever revenue targets they want to hit with nintendo switch online because for that portion of the audience that would prefer to just go buy a mini console i think that does definitely cut off a large portion of people who would continue to pay for expansion pack for things like Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask because of course you'd have to throw all those titles on something like a uh a n64 mini if, if that were to ever come out so you know do they ever do like GameCube and Wii minis way down the line it's like that's in the realm of possibility but I 
truly do believe that this was a unique time in Nintendo's history when they had to resort to things like this. And I think for the foreseeable future, subscriptions, whether you love them or hate them, only become more prevalent. So with that, guys, I want to hear from you, your personal thoughts and nostalgia around the mini line of consoles. Did you have these uh, now or are you going to plan to collect them in the future if you don't own them? Are you like me and you hope we get options like frames and then, you know, <laughs> just different options for how we emulate these games on Nintendo Switch Online? Because clearly it can be done easily. What games from this library on both systems are you still waiting to come over i know we have one standout one right here i really hope nintendo continues to throw more of the licensed games on there like your mega mans and things but you know whether or not we see them do that it all remains up for debate and speculation but i want to hear where you hope the future of nso is headed whether or not you think there's ever a possibility that we get another mini line of consoles from nintendo being like the n64 mini maybe one day the gamecube so regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today i do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already where we do a deep dive discussion around the data mine that was spotted online that may indeed reveal major plans around all of the upcoming booster course pass waves for mario kart 8 deluxe also make sure you like subscribe turn on your notification bell and i will see you guys in the next video